I'm going to kind of combine a couple of these questions that they have together because I, I get this a lot. One is people really want to see Patrick mate. They really want him to have a wife. They think he's lonely. They think that he should have a female. Um, now, you haven't had him for a long time, so I don't know if you feel comfortable speaking to that. Again, but um, so Patrick, uh, his lineage, his father and mother, they had lots of children. Hmm. So Barney is very represented in the population, his genes, and his mother is very represented in the population. So Patrick's genes are considered not to be very valuable, oh. and they want other gorilla males who are more valuable to breed so that our population uh, can be genetically healthy in the North American captive gorilla population. I see. Interesting. So again, that's, why the, that's what the SSP does, and it says that there's an SSP committee for every endangered animal in the captive population in North America. So there's one for black-footed ferrets, there's one for walking horses. Oh, that's you interesting. Know, everybody is, is genetically monitored. Now, I didn't know and that. So, that he, I didn't know yeah. that he was so overrepresented, but, you know, it's my he understanding that the last time he was exposed to a female, he swatted at her on the leg or something. So, I don't think that now, that... He was not nice, he was not nice to, to a couple of females that they tried to integrate him with. Yeah. And oh. that's why it was decided because he will not be a breeding male that he will be um, a bachelor. Yeah. Now... Now, there is a possibility at some point he might be a silverback of a bachelor group. I don't know what their um, uh. thoughts are on it. I'm not privy to what the SSP thinks. But Patrick is still considered, every time they meet, um, which is at least once a year, maybe twice a year, the Gorilla SSP committee meets, and they discuss all of the gorillas in the North American gorilla population. Ah, okay. So they know where Patrick is. They know what his status is. They know every gorilla in the country, in the North America. So he, however they want to, quote unquote, use him, that's how they'll do it. Okay. It may be that he may be able to be with Mo and um, Dakota. Ah. You know, I don't know that. I yeah. Think it's a possibility. Because at some point, Mo and Dakota will have to leave that group. Right. I'm so not they happy. already know that. They're already projecting years ahead. Uh -huh. And they have a plan for them. I don't know what that is. Wow. I hope they get to stay together. I don't know that they will, but I hope they get to stay together. It's likely they would stay together, but they will have to leave that group at some point. Right. In the next five to ten years. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. I mean, I have my own theories about this, watching Patrick like I do. Um, everyone thinks he's lonely. That's that's one of their biggest complaints. Um, he looks lonely. He, he is lonely. He doesn't have a wife. He's lonely. He doesn't have... Somebody asked me, why couldn't they have those little black and white monkeys? I've seen them in other gorilla videos where they've got these cute little black and white monkeys that the, the baby gorilla or the little boy gorillas play with. Um, somebody said, why can't he have a cat? <laughs> he might eat so, that cat. So, oh. no, number one, people love to project their emotions on Cigarillas. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's not a productive thing to do. Right. Um, they seem to be a lot like us, but they have other ways of thinking about things, and they don't really project into the future. Uh. So often people think because of their faces that they're sad or depressed or whatever. Um, however, they don't have the same muscles in their faces that we do. They can't smile. Right. They can laugh. Well, I think, emotions that way. I think they're thinking Whatever. because he's alone. Yes. So, he, because of his behavior of being antisocial with other gorillas, has basically decided to be alone, right? Oh, right. So, he, he doesn't care that the family's out there. You know, he doesn't really watch them. He could care less. Well, yeah, but it's that interesting. Tells me that he's happy being where he is and what he's doing. I was going to ask you about this because there's a great, sometimes he's still in that little sleeping room while the family's outside and they're milling around. And I've seen like four of them gather at this grate and they can watch, watch Patrick. He's laying down eating. He does not get up and go to the grate to check them out. But they all stand there and watch him. It's like he really doesn't have any interest in them. That's right. 
So that's that, that tells you that he is content in in his situation. Right, right, and they're just probably curious. And, and, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, in regard to other monkeys, um, yeah, those are colorless monkeys, the black and white ones, and those are very special situations uh, where there is another holding area that those animals live in. Uh, and then they're mixed in the ah. indoor enclosures, usually, or outdoor enclosures. So it would take quite a bit of finessing to have another set of monkeys be involved. And there are also disease worries um, oh. that gorillas could pass something to the colobus or colobus could pass something to the gorillas. Um, oh. it's, a, it's a difficult situation, put it that way. It's very complicated. Yeah. So in order to commit to something like that would take many years to to do that. Um, So given that Patty is content where he is right now, they would probably not make that decision to do that. Yeah. Now, I love that you call him Patty. It may may happen at some time that Mo and Dakota may get to be with Patty. I don't know. That's a a speculation that I have, but I could Hmm. be completely wrong. I guess they would have to. Like to say they would have to try that very carefully, I assume, and be prepared yeah. to separate them. Or yeah. okay. Um, again, different protocols and how they introduce the young males to each other, and you know all that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you for sure, Mo and Dakota will have to leave that group yeah. at some point in the future. I know. I don't like that, but I know. <laughs> how do you know how old Patrick was when he came to? Riverbank Zoo, I should probably know that, and I, I don't, right? I found in his 20s. In his 20s. Okay. And see, he's 35 now, I think, 34 or 35. And 34, yeah. 34. Now, how old do gorillas live in captivity? It's about 50, isn't it? Um, they can live in the 50s, yeah. Charles right now is 51. Oh, wow. And he's in, one of the oldest um, captive gorillas uh, right now. Okay, so in the wild, they would probably be close to dying now, right? In their 40s, they would be, yeah. Oh, in their 40s? Okay. Uh, male, male gorillas are prone to heart disease, even yeah. in the wild. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's thought to be um, stress-related. They, uh, if they make it to their 30s, they're usually going to be heart healthy. But a lot of times, male uh, gorillas die in their 20s be- due to detecting aortic aneurysm, which is something that um, mm. humans are also uh, prone to, and that's why they do the um, heart checkups on them. Wow. I didn't know that was even in the wild. I'm glad you told me that. I thought it was just yeah, in cap- it's common. captivity. Do you think that's so, the stress of being in that the position that they have to protect everybody? And yeah, I believe so, yeah. Wow. Um, now, somebody wanted to know, what what did the daily routine look like when you were caring for Patrick as a baby? Um, there was a keeper with them, not the same one, but uh, uh, we did eight-hour shifts. Mm. And so there were three people during the day that would take care of them. And um, one year after they were Patrick was brought there, um, Josephine had another baby named Jomo. And, uh, of course, Jomo had to be pulled because she didn't lactate. We tried many different things, wow. uh, including, um, you know, nipple training. Josephine was very, very smart, but she just couldn't produce milk. So huh. um, she had another baby, and he was pulled, and he was taken into the nursery. So we had three little kids wow. um, going at once. It was <laughs> like running a daycare. Well, I bet. Because um, Patty and Jabari would, as soon as you opened the door, they would run out into the kitchen area, which was then connected to the whole thing. <laughs> And they would fling the fridge open and um, get into all sorts of mischief. <laughs> now, did they wear and diapers? They, wearing, did they, y'all... Their, they did wear diapers. Oh, okay. That was... Because you didn't want them to poo all over everywhere. Right, right. When they, were, when they were in the nursery area, we would take the diapers off and they would be free. But um, when they were running around in the people areas, they had to wear diapers. Oh, wow. That's funny. And so at one point, we had two toddlers basically and then one newborn that we had to carry around everywhere so it was, it was quite the demanding um job but i loved it it's the best thing i've ever done oh that's neat that is so neat um let me see if there's anything we haven't covered i think we've kind of covered it all even without just to sum up for people who maybe didn't catch it in the beginning you y'all did make an attempt to uh 
put Patrick with a surrogate mother. And that was, that was largely unsuccessful because Charles, the silverback, didn't like Patrick. Did I get that right? It wasn't just one attempt. It was over the year. Okay. Uh, we tried almost every day. Uh, because we introduced him to all the other females. Um, um, they did live with them uh, in the holding area. They lived with Josephine full time for a time. And then they would go out every day and be with all the other girls. Charles had to be held back because he couldn't be with them. Wow. Um, so, you know, we did work <coughs> on lots of socialization with the other girls. It just was decided eventually that it wasn't going to be successful completely. So we wanted to give them a chance to go somewhere else and be more successful. Yeah. And that's when he went to Dallas. That's correct. Okay. And then, but then they didn't have... I'll tell you... I'll tell you one one thing that <laughs> happened. Um, so, like I said, there was a teenager in the girl area. Her name was Catherine. Right now, she lives in Little Rock, too. And she's never bred. She she wasn't fertile for some reason, whatever. As a teenager, <laughs> Catherine was kind of um, aggressive. She was aggressive with the keepers. She was a little bit aggressive with her mother. Oh. She was just um, full of uh, piss and vinegar, as you say. Uh huh. So, so when we introduced uh, Patty and Jabari to her, she would run around. She would chase them. She was, um, you know, quite challenging. And uh. one day we were all out watching the introduction, all of the keepers, and you know, there they go. They're in the whole in the uh, indoor exhibit, uh, which at the time was kind of old, and uh, it was <laughs> cement and. Uh, filled with straw and different things uh, to, to work in. But Catherine decided she was going to have fun with Patty that day. And she took him and she bowled him across the exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, we were all horrified. We were like, oh my God, what is she doing? She's going to kill us. <laughs> and so we all, we all were like freaking out. And Patty was fine. <laughs> That's funny. Well, he's got a big old head. So <laughs> he would be fine. Um, I was going to ask you something else. Let me see what it was. I just lost it. Um, oh, so maybe you'll know about this. This was kind of mixed in with the peripheral thing. But bachelor groups, there's different bachelor groups at different zoos. I mean, for example, I know at Zoo Atlanta, there's three, I think it's three brothers maybe in a bachelor group. And somebody here is asking, are they never going to be able to meet have families, what will happen with all of them? What so, do you like I said, um, the SSP committee is in charge of all of that. They decide who's going to mate with whom, who's going to go to a different zoo, um, who they're going to live with, all that sort of thing. And then the complicated part is uh, as keepers, you have to, you know, mix them together and all that other stuff. Right. Um, so every, now, these days, um, every... Every zoo that has a breeding family group must have a peripheral bachelor group. Really? Um, because there are too many adult males. Oh, for the genetics. We have an over, oh, yeah, we have an over um, abundance of males uh, because see. males live with multiple females. Um, there aren't uh, enough females to go around. Okay. So they decide that this group is going to be together as a family group. And they're going to live their lives out, and then uh, they have to take boys out and put them in bachelor groups so that, A, they, they can be socialized with another gorilla, another animal, so they won't be lonely. And, uh, B, they uh, potentially, at one point in their life, could be pulled out of that bachelor group to um, make a family. Oh, interesting. Uh, it just depends, uh, again, on their genetics, how, how, who they're related to. Um, what their status is in their genetics and stuff like that. So there are many uh, things that go into the uh, calculating of that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things like that. So Interesting. So do you every, think... Every zoo must have a bachelor. So that interesting at Riverbank is to be their bachelor. And Okay. Oh. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And do you think there's some of us sort of protect people projecting again on them? Like... What if they want to get married and have children? Because that's, that's how we think. 
and maybe they're not even yeah. thinking that way. You know, I know at, at, at Riverbanks, no. Charlie's sort of in a, a head, the head of the group, and he's the, the youngest, and they seem to be thinking more about who's going to get the orange that just landed in the middle, you know. Yeah. So they're not thinking um, about, I want to get married and have babies, you know. No, that, that's um, a very cultural yeah. um, thing that happens that they don't have. They don't have that cultural practice. Okay, yeah. Like I follow, I follow um, mountain gorillas and what happens with mountain gorillas as in Rwanda. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you there are family groups and there are bachelor groups. Wow. Um, and they're naturally made on their own. So that's why the captive population is managed that way because it is more natural. Wow. That's that's yeah. just fascinating. Now, do those bachelors it, it ever like intrude on a non bachelor group and have you know fight to try to take over? They surely do. Okay. They surely do. That is their job. Okay. Their job is to try and heal some females away and make their own family. Ah. Okay. <laughs> wow. I will tell so you what, Patrick's I learned something. In particular, in Patrick's particular situation. Because he isn't really interested in other gorillas, that's probably not going to happen with him. Right. What do you think is the likelihood that he could be hooked up with Dakota and Mo? I can't say that. I'm hopeful that that may happen. And I know, I know Patrick well enough to know that he has some very good people on the gorilla peak committee. I've never asked them that question because I don't want to put them in that position. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that that they have him in mind, and hopefully that they would. Uh -huh. Know, consider that. Do you think it's possible that he would get along with them now that he's older? He's kind of past all that hormonal stuff? It's possible. Okay. That would be nice. Be nice to see. Yeah. Well, Kim... Like I said, if he's content, then he doesn't really care. <laughs> he's, and I tell you what, he seems content to me. Yeah, and he likes the keepers, like you said. And, yes. Um, that's, they enrich him. Like They give him movies to watch. We do that all kinds of zoos do that. They, they provide other care for their uh, bachelors. Um, Toronto Zoo currently has a bachelor group as well. They have a bachelor group of two. They are brothers, uh, brothers. No, they're not full brothers. They're half brothers. They have the same father and they have a different mother. Yeah. And they live together sometimes happily, sometimes not. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they fight with each other. They do normal brother things. Right. I love it. And, and, you know, they also are considered in the SSP plan, and they are actually high on the list of um, desirability as far as their genetics, because both their parents, each one, both of their parents are um, high on the genetic um, ladder because they were one caught. So their genes are very uh, um, important to the yeah. population. So I'm hoping that at some point, Siddiqui and uh, Nasser will go and have their own family. It won't be at our zoo, it'll be somewhere else. Yeah. Well, let me ask your opinion about when I heard that Patrick, part of his enrichment was he got to watch Disney movies in the back. Of course, the parent of a young child in me was like horrified. He's watching TV? What? <laughs> but you say other, other gorillas do this also. Yeah, and not just gorillas. Um, other, you know, isolated animals often will um, be provided visual stimulation. Uh, is what we would call that. Right, yeah. It's not like they um, understand I, the I, story. For 17 years, I also worked with a monkey sanctuary in, in Ontario, and we also provide them with um, cartoon stimulation. Really? Wow. And as well, we uh, would provide them with um, animal videos, like National Geographic videos, uh -huh. things like that. Do they seem to recognize that, you know, that it's animals? All the animals I've seen exposed to that and enjoyed it. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Yeah. Well, Kim, this has been fabulous. I learned something and um, I... I hope it was educational and that it explained a few things. Oh, yeah. You definitely explained things either that I didn't even have on here to ask you. And it looks to me like we covered <laughs> everything. So hopefully we do. Because <laughs> it was a well, lot. I hope. I just want to say I hope that if any Dallas zookeepers um, hear this and hear about Patrick, I know that he has his own story from there, and I know that you guys loved him, and I appreciate your care for him, and um, everybody that you know looked after Patrick. I know it has loved him because his personality is 
quite spectacular. Yeah. He's quite the guy. He really is. He's really sweet. And he'll sit and just watch the people at the window where, you know, if Senzo and his troop are in there, they don't necessarily do that. Somebody might turn around and watch, but it's kind of rare. But he'll he'll sit there on the floor eating, chewing, munching away on something and just watching people the whole time. He just seems to really enjoy it. So I find that um, gorillas really love to watch little kids. Oh yeah, yeah. And they love they like it when they like it when they're in strollers and sometimes um, you know, other animals will come by, like uh, they'll bring a dog by or yeah. other animals. Yeah. Gorillas love that too. They they're very um visually oriented like we are. Yeah. And sometimes uh, it can be a problem because people from the public like to show them videos on their phone because everyone has a phone now. And it can become a problem because they get, huh. like, addicted to it. Oh, and, um, just well, like humans. Really yeah. Oh, wow. I sometimes didn't know. You'll see videos from other zoos where people are showing gorillas things and they're like, okay, yes. go, go, go. And then they can get upset when the person leaves or oh. there are other things to consider, right? Oh, goodness. Well, I know, talking about little people, Senzu will face the window with his hand on the window um, when there's a lot of little children there. And now, Acacia yep. does the same thing. And sometimes, Kazi will, she doesn't usually put her hand up, but she'll just turn and face the window. And it's always when there's children there. And of course, they just get so excited. Um, and one day, there was a there was somebody had a service dog. It was like a little white poodle. And Zakoda kept walking back and forth. And I thought, is he interested in that dog or the child? I couldn't tell. And all of a sudden, he sort of slapped the window real high and turned around and, and, and ran away. Like like he was saying goodbye to the, to the little dog. I don't know. I'm sure he wasn't. But he seemed real tickled about that little dog, you know? That would be a play, that would be a play gesture. Ah, he probably wanted to play. He wanted, he wanted the little dog to play. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> that is so sweet. Well, I tell you what, there's so much to know about gorillas. They're, it's just yeah. unbelievable. Um, and as long as I live, there, I will never stop learning. Um, there's always <laughs> just so much more to learn. But thank you so much for your help with this and sharing your insights and your wisdom and your information about Patrick so we kind of know his background and where he's coming from and what he's been through and um yeah. and he's You're very a, welcome he's like, a, and just to say as well uh, to reiterate that um he's not been forgotten by anybody mm. like he is loved by his keepers um the SSC committee knows how his life is going and um, he's been in consideration. I can guarantee you that. Oh, that's so, neat. Um, in, in no way is he relegated to a back holding and forgotten. In no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, do you know what, what zoo he was at before Riverbanks? I was reading something about, I don't know if it was Dallas? That may not Dallas, be right. Yes. Was it Dallas? Okay. And I'm thinking, okay. did they have a hard time with him? Like, they didn't know how, how to handle him, or they didn't know how to flip the schedules or maybe they didn't have the facilities for that and that's why he went to Riverbank Zoo? So um, there were many, Patty had many different difficulties at uh, Dallas. Um, they did have enough uh, areas and holdings to accommodate him. However, he made trouble for himself basically. He wouldn't um, oh. go with anybody else. He was aggressive with other females. Oh. He was, um, you know, there were lots of difficulties, and, the, and they tried their best, um, and then it was decided he should he should move on. Ah, uh, and did he? Do you know if he came to Riverbanks at the same time as Sinzu, or was it separate? He was there before. Okay. Before. Okay. There, there was another another grouping there before. Um, Riverbanks never had a breeding group before. They had uh, some males. Okay. okay. And then they went elsewhere, and the breeding group came in. They made a, a grouping for them. Okay, wonderful. I'm I'm very glad they did. <laughs> but mm -hmm. all right. Well, listen. I just can't thank you enough for your time and and all of this information. This is absolutely fabulous. And um, hey, you're welcome. I, I hope that it's fairly clear, though. There's a lot of information we talked about. Yeah, there is a lot, but I think I think it is. And if somebody needs to, they can go back to the beginning and start over. <laughs> 
All right. And well, feel free to, to email any questions, or uh, you know, we'll be in touch in the future. And I will. Can, I will do that. Uh, in mails I have in my head. I will do that. Thank you so much, Kim. I appreciate it. Good luck with your the cat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no babies and yet. Again, I want to thank you. If any Toronto people are listening, I'm not taking credit for everything. I, there were eight other people who helped me. Oh yeah. Um, I was just a, a little a little junior keeper at the time, and uh, I learned a lot from the the older keepers that were there at the time. Yeah. My very close friend uh, Vanessa uh, was a huge mentor to me in my career, and she was there at the time as well as. Um, Marilyn, and uh, they were incredible people to learn from. And Neat. also, there were guerrilla conferences uh, through the years, and learned from very, very experienced uh, people. Um, who and we all came up with the the protocol that's in place right now. It all went well, and uh, Columbus Zoo uh, can take uh, credit for all that. Um, there's been a lot, a lot of hundreds of people who have contributed to uh, the well-being of all gorillas that are alive today. Hmm. And it's a, been a really big collaborative effort. Neat. That's neat. I know it has. I really do. All right. Well, thank you, and good luck with your kitty. <laughs> Let me know what happens. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, yeah. a lot. thanks a lot, Kim. Bye-bye.